Welcome to Know Your Right. My name is Brighton Nobel, a show that focuses on amplifying the voices and the work of CSOs in Mola and beyond. Today on the show, I'm joined by Richard Love, the Public Relations Officer for Women's Institute for Leadership Development. Richard, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Okay, Richard, let's talk about WILD. What is WILD? WILD is a non profit organization mm -hmm. that was established in 2012 with the sole purpose of empowering women and girls. So, our vision mm -hmm. is to see women and girls at the core of economic, political, and social development. Right, when talking about putting the girls in front, empowering them, right, what are some of the programs that you've been doing over the years? The, the programs that we've been doing over the years are programs that make women at the center of all decision-making processes. So we've been having programs such as Where Is My Public Servant? Mm -hmm. Programs such as those were meant to make sure that they demand social accountability from their leaders. And we've also been having trainings, budget tracking trainings. We've also been having uh, grooming and etiquette trainings with them. So this training was solely meant for making sure that they are able and they gain the capacity to, to demand social accountability from their leaders. And as well, we realize that most of the women within different communities are not aware of their rights. And when I say rights, I talk of that they can demand improved, se improved service delivery from their leaders, from their elected leaders. That is to say their councillors, members of parliament. So we've been trying to make sure that these women are equipped with the skills necessary to demand such. So we've also been having social accountability trainings. Mm -hmm. These trainings were very key in uh, strengthening women's capacity to demand this uh, improved service delivery and social accountability from their leaders. Still speaking of the program that we've been doing over the years, last year we're also going to Makokuba, Mzeliga, Zilopengula, as well as going out in rural areas, speaking to women and also consulting their councillors. How has been the response from the rural women in terms of your programming? The response has been quite overwhelming because the programs that we were doing, most of the forecast last year was on elections. I'm pretty sure we all know we had the 2018 harmonized yeah. elections. So our focus was on getting women to be voters, active participants in the development of uh, the whole country and their communities. So what we were doing was we would go out into various communities within Bulawayo because we work in Bulawayo, Gweru, Gwanda, Umzingwane, Lupane, and Plantry. Yeah. So we'd go out into these communities and try and establish a level playing field for women and men. Our message was to say women also need to participate not just as voters but also as candidates. So we saw quite a number of women rising up to the occasion. Most of the women in previous years, they had so much fear. Mm -hmm. Most of the women were so engrossed in issues to do with patri patriarchy and um, you'd find that most of them, they tended to say, politics is not my space. Yeah. But last year, we say to the women, politics is your space. Mm -hmm. Take it, own it. And this is why you'll see there was quite a number of young women mm -hmm. who rose up to the occasion. In Bulawayo here, they, there are quite a number of um, young women whom we had thought, you would have thought they would not engage mm -hmm. in, in politics. But we saw them running for office as councillors, mm -hmm. as members of parliament. And even though they, might not, they may not have made it, that's a step, yeah. a huge step. Speaking of elections and women claiming their space in politics, let's talk, let's talk about Slay the Vote. What was the idea behind Slay the Vote? The idea behind Slay the Vote was young women, mm -hmm. take your heels, go out and vote. Mm -hmm. So I would say that Slay the Vote, we, we coined this campaign with the idea that young women, especially young women, should start participating in politics rather now than later. When they start now, they gain the confidence mm -hmm. at an earlier stage because you'll notice that most of the elderly women that engage in politics, from our experience, 
most of them were lacking confidence. Yeah. So we thought, what better way to make sure that these women have confidence when they best need it? Mm -hmm. We thought, let's catch them young. Yeah. So we've been working with youths from the ages of 18. And we've been trying to make sure that they are involved, not just in politics, mm -hmm. but the economy. Their lack of participation in the economy has quite a huge bearing on their future and the future of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Also, speaking of young women, we also saw during the PV registration lap, and Uganda decided to go vote. As a woman, it was difficult for one to go and get her to vote. Remember, Uma Mwenlin was supposed to clean, cook, do every chores. Then, when I'm accused, people to go register to vote, even to vote, where do you get the time to go and say, I want to make my vote count? What are the spend that? What about Kutas and Yana? I want to get guys go and register to vote. But we did our best. We went out into our communities. We tried to also engage Obaba. We had SSU visa sitting at our men's clubhouse meetings. At our men's clubhouse meetings, we had a lot of people who were in the clubhouse and we had a lot of people who were in the clubhouse. Participate as candidates. We tried to tackle the problem from its root. Mm -hmm. In our society, Lapa e Zimbabwe, a patriarchy has told us that umama, her place is in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Her place is in taking care of Abandwana. Agumelanga, mm Abeguma -hmm. public offices. Agumelanga, mm -hmm a participate in activities and in politics, economy. But in a certain way, you can see that you can see that be at the core. You can vision that you can see that you can see that you not the periphery. Mm -hmm. It's that time of that you can be participate meaningfully yeah. to the development of a community. I want to tell you, now all mama being a girl, all participate. Then in the end, Obaba will also decide to push for isinto that affect them yeah. and leave out isinto as affecta all mama. Look at in the Bazama maternal health care centers too. As all mama, that is a priority. That is something Ogmelu wutinga ia prioritizer. Some time back, sasi hambe a. Mshasanjela clinic, ego ward ten eto esilo, emzingwane district. It's something else. We as boys guti, oh mama have to walk 15 kilometers to a clinic. Kona po a clinic ya kona has no facilities alumile. Yes. Now so still on the elections. What's your take on the pull it down syndrome? We saw mama participating in my elections, running as candidates and also voting. But we had that element of guti. She's a woman. Those questions like, is she married? What's the same? People going back, checking what you went on previously before they vote for you. How do you rate those things? I think that's really difficult mm -hmm. because you'll find, yes, they are there. But I don't mama who say, I mean, I'm going to vote for you. But in the work that we've been doing, we encourage those women to say, we need to push her yeah. up. And you go to a pull her down syndrome. Yeah, push her up. City, no, let's push her up. Mm -hmm. Because that way we get to see women leading, mm -hmm. making key decision making, uh, um, invo being involved in yeah. key decision making processes, yes. and in the end, assisting Wanaba or Mama who are promoting a pull her down syndrome. So we're trying to encourage them. We to know as women, we should also try to push ourselves up. Umele si kangele, singa titi na ai, mina mfuno kuvotela uba balwa not koge intoenge. That's what women do abaneng. But we tried very much. Uguti i syndrome lay i pele, and we tried to encourage o mama uguti gule fifty fifty lapa gule to ele Zimbabwe, and they should also. Make sure they try and push for what we call a 50-50 representation in all spheres of life, which is why we felt sometimes it's not just the women mm -hmm. who push for e, e pull her down syndrome lay. Sometimes it's also the men. Yeah. 
So we tried to influence political parties to have a 50-50 within their political parties. And as an organization, we're saying, Nguti, if government in some way can have a law, oza compela all political parties to have a 50-50, Nguti, we, we will not take ama candidates as a runner, ngagu yuguti agula o mama 50%, yeah. o baba 50%. Because in as much as gu kona, gu constitution yet, gu section 56, e kuluma nge gender equality and non-discrimination, you will find uguti implementation ya kona is lacking. Yeah. But if we do that as a nation, then we'll go somewhere. Right. Also, speaking of gender equality, we're all working towards achieving sustainable SDG number five for gender equality. Do you, think, do you think gender equality is achieved up in Zimbabwe? And where are we now in achieving gender equality? If gender equality is achievable, it takes a multi-stakeholder participation. Mm -hmm. That means government should be involved. Tina, as citizens and as individuals, we should be involved. Mm -hmm. A civic society, should also play its role. Not just the civic society, but also um, uh, different corporate companies should also play their role. Because when we say gender equality, we're not just talking of politics. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, different spheres of impilozetu, like the economy, mm -hmm. the economic sector, 50-50. Mm -hmm. Women who take up positions of influence should also be there, bebe kona kona po gufi gubele 50-50, gunga bi space sabo baba gupe. But also talking about 50-50, let's go back to our societies and our culture. We have worked in Makai, Rakuli, Wuti, trying to push in girl empowerment in Makai. How has been the response from our chiefs, those traditional leaders, in terms of telling them what to want to achieve 50-50, where a wild want to do APCD on the girl child? Why how is the response from our traditional leaders, our chiefs, or something like that? The traditional leaders have been forthcoming mm -hmm. because Nasi Musa Ama participants for all our meetings, mm -hmm. we engage them. And the fact that they agree Ugutugubela Ama meetings Anjalo mm -hmm. that will benefit women. Mm -hmm. Then for us it's a plus. That means we're taking Ama steps towards making sure Ugu today is 50-50. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure in the past Gwagungava a situation where they would say no. But in this instance, they agreed to us having meetings with women, not just 10 women, but oh mama, I have a figure, 100, over 100. Mm -hmm. And that's a step yeah. towards 50-50 gender equality. And also, Skuma Nenda, I must center repairs, the center repairs issue, if you go to if you go to Makai, you hear that a girl child is using ama paper, ama shampoo, cow dung, during that time's menstrual cycle. As well as have been doing the red campaign. Tell us about the red campaign. The red cycle campaign, Lyosaikalisa after the realization Uguti Abantwana Abangamangazan end up missing Iskolo mm -hmm. because of lack of amasanitary pads. Mm -hmm. And because of this, when they miss out on school, Vashleve Salile move. Umtano Mfana continues in school. So we thought Singagwen Zanjan. Uguti over Abandwan, but participate in our school activities without missing out. Because Mzingwane, some of the councillors were saying to us there is high absenteeism because of lack of sanitary pads. And Sawubondo in Dolok, it has a ripple effect. Nago Umtana Eswele is sanitary ped, Gutina will affect so many factors in Bilweniak. And we started this campaign, Sibon would, okay. Nasing Azama Ugutisi tole ama sanitary pads in the form of donations. So I collect ama sanitary pads lao and then distribute them to schools, distribute them to vulnerable children who would let it play our part as civic society. And we also realized Uguti, this does this just doesn't affect Abantwana Abangan. It also affects young women. Young women via Kreta is school, but they are not employed. Yeah. Some of them do not have access to sanitary pads. Kungabale meeting a council, 
Gasoza kwanzukhambo munto njalo because she does not have a sanitary pad and she cannot ngena a town engali sevensa ngi sanitary pad. Emma Kaya especially but tuna be sevensa ama ama alternatives ange ko hygienic yeah. and we thought singa player lati our part will then contribute meaningfully to our vision. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, when these people have this access to ama sanitary pad, they'll be able to participate meaningfully mm -hmm. in all areas. Still speaking on sanitary pads, I thought at the conversion of Mimundo School, this thing in large affects all my cousins, I was cool. But now, it paid silly dollar. Look at the prices now. It now affects also the, the urban child. How are you lobbying the government to talk about Dugoti? These things must be for free. No, 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 what free takes, whatever, whatever, but this thing might be for free. How are you looking the government to say, guys, this thing is providing for free? Sometime last year, we drew up a, a, a petition. Say, so submit a where they walk from a uh, Chitungwiza to the parliament mm -hmm. in partnership with Abanye in the civic society organized in the civic society sector. We sat down and we thought. As be sending this petition to Parliament to say government should provide to should provide free sanitary pads for the girl child. Mm -hmm. This would assist Gakulu, Ebandwan and Veskolo and also the young women. You will realize Uti Ama sanitary pads are free. Umdwana o in Gazana will go about their daily business gushe. Gasoze achone a frustrated with gala masanitary pads. Kangela gatesi in most shops, amasanitary pads eli wa just one packet with eight or ten uh, sanitary pads. Iabe it cost us seven dollars seventy five. They're not employed. That's expensive. We are being eco employed um u young women, and we are liteng anjani i packet lelo for just one cycle. Umtuana o in Gazana or u young women Udinga Uti a sevens at least two packets. Moba gumelu uti a jinje at least four times ngelang, four or five times ngelang. So I won't jail to packet his ten or eight units. Nali costa seven dollars, uzafuna two packets, abanye even three for those who have e heavy floor. We are tolling a P E twenty something dollars. You go to seven summer center pets. You go over your between our seven sa amalembo. Between our seven sa it cow down. You have a season makai. Speak sleeping on the red side campaign. How can people reach out to world to assist and to donate our our pets? To donate our pets, they can be in contact with us via our landline, which is zero two nine two seven nine nine six five. Go umbebeng us Tinder on all our social media platforms. Go Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud. Beng us taller. We we use U8 Wild Trust Zim in all of our accounts. Then we're also available go WhatsApp. The WhatsApp number that we use mu 0773 when us tinta ngalozo njela, they'll be able to make ama donations for ama sanitary pads, which will help Gakulu to benefit umtana o ingazan. Right, in closing, Bridget, how can you inspire young women? Because someone watching the show is saying, I want to be like Bridget. I want also to participate, to go out. I want also to be, my, my, my voice to be heard. How can you motivate them? How can you inspire them? Just in closing. I think as a young woman, you should know what you have to participate in politics. Mm -hmm. You have to participate in matters of the economy. Yeah. Don't procrastinate. Mm -hmm. Do it today. The time is now. Mm -hmm. Come to our offices. <laughs> Come to our offices. What interest do you have in politics? Tinas is a one organization that is apolitical. We do not support any specific political party. Sia Sevenza lae wonku muntu nje e Zimbabwe. So, Wuya, come to our offices. We are situated at Bradlow's building, the fourth floor, office 401. And we can talk. Sikulu me, sikotlisane ngoguti wena in your community. Guhamba njani. 
are you participating in local council programs? If you are not, if you are not participating, then why not? Kalisa namusha. Because if you don't, uzatlalu complain uti namusha agula mans. Uzatlalu complain uti gula masua atubugile. But if you talk to us, tina ewild, siza go assist uti ube wazuti. How do you engage a council? How do you talk to your councillor? How do you talk to your member of parliament? There you have it, viewers. That was Bridget Lovo, the public relations officer from Wild, from Wild, yes. Right, to, to know more about Wild, just follow them at Wild Trust Zim, right? And also to follow us on Twitter at SideZW. Do follow me on Twitter at Real B Factor. This has been Know Your Right. Bridget, keep empowering women, keep motivating them, keep inspiring them, keep shining. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you very much, Brighton. Till next time, Know Your Right. Wazamalungu no Aku. Thank you.